the end is near, my friends. We have found Vortra's hiding place. By your, your, your wickedness, wickedness, you stand, you stand to gain your Had you Had only, only just trusted, just trusted fate, 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 fate to me, there would there have, would have been, been peace, peace for all. You, you could, could have, have lived bliss, bliss in my, in my eternal, eternal paradise. Free, free from the from burdens, burdens of constant purpose. Peace assumes many forms, and I do not doubt that you considered yours well worth the cost. I was even prepared to believe that the end might justify the means. Ignorant as I was, I had hoped that you might mend your ways and join hands with us. That we might strive together for the happiness of all. But no more. Your actions cannot be reconciled with your words. Peace for all, you say. Yet when you were threatened, your first act was to sacrifice your own people in order to save yourself. If your paradise can be rebuilt so long as you alone survive, it exists not for the people. It exists solely for your twisted pleasure. Hear me, Vorthri. The people won't submit to your will, for we each have our own. I made a promise to a noble soul, a woman who saw fit to entrust me with her legacy, and I mean to keep it. Everyone who stands with us has something precious, something that they cherish and would die to protect. They know their own hearts. They know what they want for this world. And by lending their strength to our cause, they have spoken. No matter how hard you may try to bend the world to your will, we will never yield! Silence! Silence! Not another word! You presume to lecture me, insolent words. You will learn your place. With my true powers awakened, I will expunge you like the fifth you are. Your demise will serve as a reminder to all that I am the zealous of mankind and shinny to both, chosen to rule over creation by right of transcendence. My very existence is virtuous. I am perfect, immaculate. He seems disinclined to grant us an audience. Find Vortri. We will hold the Eaters here. Come! Let's finish this! Determined to die? One last chance, villains! Bow down and acknowledge your king! Your god!
I cast down? But it is you who are the villains. Father told me that I am hope. I am righteousness. Look, the sky. Were it not for my decisive action, the whole city would have been overrun, razed to the ground. Yet they dare to complain about casualties? Spare me. I'll wager they were put up to it by those wretches who seek to usurp me. They're stirring up the citizenry. But if they think I will yield to the likes of them, they are gravely mistaken. To be subjected to such deplorable treatment, such ingratitude. You have my sympathy, sir. You do so much good for this city, and you could do so much more were you not surrounded by fools. Who are you? You're not supposed to be in here. My apologies for the intrusion, but I come bearing a proposal, one that will ensure the longevity of your reign. But give me the word, sir, and I will bring hither a light warden. By giving its power to the babe within your lady wife's womb, we shall create a transcendent being, a king to rule over all. And as sire to the king, your authority will never again be in question.
<laughs> Amazing. Before my Vorthri, they behave as docile pets. With this gift, my line shall be guaranteed power for perpetuity. We shall rule the whole world. By all means, sir. United under Yulmor's banner, men will cease fighting and abandon their ambitions. Thus, they will grow fat and complacent, and in their sloth, seal your supremacy. Fend. She cannot contain the light. She's beginning to turn. Uriange, if you've ought up your sleeve, now is the time. It's changing back. The power of every Light Warden is too terrible a burden for any one soul to bear. And so I shall relieve you of it. this profusion of power to the Crystal Tower and use it to travel to other worlds. As I have dreamed of doing ever since I first learned of their existence. Who would choose to remain here in this dying realm when they might go elsewhere and begin anew? Not I. And thus, thus did I use you. I don't believe you! It doesn't make sense! Damn you! We won't let you do with her as you please. Do not interfere! Please, I beseech you all, let him go! You knew of this, Uriangé. It is all a fiction. Such vaguely defined acts of teleportation stand no chance of success. The Exarch will never live to see another world, as he knows only too well. Then, what does he mean to do? He means to take the light with him into the rift, where he will die. From the beginning, he intended to sacrifice himself to save our friend and Norvrend. At journey's end, an opportunistic thief makes off with the hero's prize. A paltry way to end a chapter, I concede. Yet your tale will continue, and my role in it will scarcely be remembered. Worry not. 
Whatever should become of me, I will be happy and free, safe in the knowledge that I have played my part. Thank you for fighting for this world, for believing. Fare you well, my friend, my inspiration. Only those who possess the royal eye of the Alagan Imperial line are capable of controlling the Crystal Tower. Such individuals do not exist in the first. Therefore, in all likelihood, the Exarch arrived here with the Tower. This much I had surmised, yet I could not discern his grand scheme. To think that he went through all this trouble for the sake of a single hero. It's almost admirable in its absurdity. Alas, it is not your grand scheme that will succeed, but ours. You bastard! Stay put. Your friend is still alive, but whether he remains so depends on you. What a disappointment you turned out to be. I placed my faith in you. Let myself believe that you could contain the light. But look at you now. Halfway to becoming a monster. You are unworthy of my patronage. desire is to usher in the great rejoining. A hundred years ago, I entrusted my comrade Logriff with the task of increasing light sway over this world. This we sought to do by manipulating heroes. When that failed to achieve the desired result, I created Vorthri. But thanks to your meddling, that too has ended in failure. What was your true purpose in approaching us? By your twelve, boy, have I not told you before that everything I said was the truth? You were specimens by which I might gauge man's potential as it stands. I genuinely had an interest in you, genuinely considered taking you on as allies. Provided she could contain and control the light. If not, then she, and by extension you, would be of no use to me. It was as simple as that. So, we've been found wanting. How disheartening. But even had we fulfilled your conditions, there was no guarantee that we would cooperate. What then? then I simply kill you all. At the very least, it would restore the world to the way it was before you went about trouncing lightning's willy-nilly. 
Suffice it to say, it would be most inconvenient to have all that light taken away. And I would be lying if I were to claim his actions didn't have me worried. Hmm. You still retain your form and your senses. But you have all but become a sin eater. Whether you will it or no, your mere existence will serve to engulf the world in light. Those in your company will likewise turn into Sin Eaters, and in time you will succumb to your base instincts and hunt innocents to feast on their sweet, sweet ether. Those few of the will left to fight may rise up against you. But before your absolute might, they will quickly know despair. There is no hope. We are finished. Mankind is finished. Ah, oh, the irony. What 4-3 achieved through bliss, you achieved through despair. But I have overstayed my welcome. I shall look forward to seeing you bring the world to its knees, hero. Exarch! I have naught to show for all the time and effort I invested in you. He is a small token for my troubles. I did not expect that I could learn aught from man, but I may yet learn something from all the knowledge he had hoarded for his precious hero. I pity you, I do. Your friends are now your foes. If you do not kill them, they will kill you. When it all becomes too much to bear, seek me out at my abode in the dark depths of the Tempest. There, you may complete your descent into madness with some dignity, far from prying eyes. Till then, I bid you farewell. Eat. Finally. You're confused, and small wonder. After you collapsed, Emmet Selk vanished. Then Reen did what she could to stay the raging of the light within your body. Thanks to her, you're still you. But she's only delayed the inevitable. You're not going to like what you see, but you still need to see it.
it's like this all over. The whole of Norvrat is shrouded in light again. And it's because of you and the power you absorb from the Wardens. No one knows but your friends. When they carried you down from the mountain, they told everyone waiting below that they didn't understand why the light had returned. And now they're out there trying to allay the people's fears while searching for a way to save you. If you're well enough to be up, you're well enough to get some fresh air. Better that than stewing in here. Go on. Go.